So good morning. My name is Reverend Alice Reed, and I am here this morning to broadcast to you and be with you um, on our Sunday morning experience. Now you might be noticing that um, I'm not broadcasting from the center, but I'm broadcasting from my home office. And that's because if COVID has taught us anything, it is that skill of being flexible in an, an environment that is constantly changing. And one of our team members became ill and she had some symptoms. And so we're being cautious and staying at home until we know the results of their COVID test. Um, we're just we're just being careful, so I don't think it's anything to worry about. I fully expect a negative test result, and we'll be back in the sanctuary next week when Reverend Elijah will be speaking. Yes, that's right. I said Reverend Elijah. The theme for September is facing our fear, and there's certainly a lot to be concerned about in our world these days. A healthy amount of fear, like knowing when to uh, and ha when your stove is hot and not to touch it or you'll get burned, is being cautious and makes sense. Uh, it's important to be cautious. Um, for instance, when someone in our tech team has flu symptoms, we're just being cautious. And, and so that healthy amount of fear can be really helpful, but um, fear can be really unhealthy, too, and I think we all know that. One of the go-to strategies, excuse me, <clears throat> one of the go-to strategies when we're in fear is um, control. Another strategy is worry. We reach for ways to control things when we're in fear in an attempt to try to make it go away. And sometimes... Others, knowingly or unknowingly, use that relationship we humans have with fear and control, using that fear to try to motivate us. Advertising, in its lowest form, uses fear to motivate us to buy products. Politicians use fear, oftentimes instilling, trying to instill fear about the world that we live in or their opponents that they want to beat out in an election. Vote for me, I'll do the right thing and you won't have to experience fear. Now I know I'm stating the obvious, we're all experiencing that on a grand level right now as we come closer to a, a major election here in the US. There's a lot going on right now and there's a lot in the world to be concerned about. And you may be experiencing fear around politics and uh, national and local policies. You might be fe experiencing fear around the economy. You might be experiencing fear about the pandemic or perhaps race relations or our climate. My guess is that all of this and more is coming up, not against us, but for us. 2020 has been a difficult year for many of us, and there's genuine concern for what some are calling a collective trauma that our world is moving through. And what I know about trauma is that it often triggers traumas from the past. Fear just exacerbates that trauma when it remains unconscious. And so I think as in this idea of facing our fears, the invitation is really for us to press into those fears so that they don't own us, but that we can use them as conscious capitalists. Facing our fears through inquiry gives us the ability to presence ourselves and to take right action. As a, a kind of absurd uh, example, if you will, going back to that hot stove, if you were afraid of hot stoves, um, that, that fear could cause you to never go near it and maybe even remove it from your home. And maybe some of you are thinking, that would be a good excuse for me not to cook anymore. But I know it's a silly example, but my point is that a, that a healthy fear helps to guide us and to lead us into right action. And it is the unhealthy fear that causes us to begin to 
draw on old fears and old traumas and make decisions that aren't really based in from a conscious place, but more from that that unconscious place where we might be drawing on uh, old memories of past fears. And so um, what I'm suggesting today is that we begin to look at a fear as um, a practice that is a telltale sign that there's something for us to to go deeper about. There's something that is, is calling us to be in, more in inquiry. I was thinking about fear. Of course, it's the, the topic all month. So as I was contemplating that, I, I was thinking that it seems to me that unhealthy fear comes from giving too much power to the us against them or it thinking, that dualistic thinking, if you will, and our attachment to the conditions or things that are happening in the world. We, when those two things marry themselves, typically, if we're not conscious, we go unconscious and it's the fear that takes over. I mean, you just have to look at the news. The Dems want you to be afraid of the Republicans and the Republicans want you to be afraid of the Democrats, each declaring that the other is a complete uh, cause of all the ills in our culture. Unhealthy fear uses blame and shame to distance us from our personal responsibility. And there are conscious choices that need to be made right now, choices that are informed by principle and by our values, and we can't do that if our fear is running us. A conscious choice for something is way more powerful than a choice against something. You may be for personal freedom, but instead of focusing on that value of personal freedom, you might be focusing on the intrusive nature of government policies that limit personal freedom. And then conversely, you might be of, of the mind that there are not enough policies to protect the underserved. Both ideas support personal freedom, but both focus on the lack of personal freedom and the conditions that come of it. Neither truly focuses on the, that idea of personal freedom as a choice one makes. Once someone chooses personal freedom, their relationship to it has the opportunity to become more empowering because it's that choice point that gives us the power. And unfortunately, depending on your relationship to your mind and your conscious choices, this isn't always as easy as flipping a switch, is it? Here's where facing your fears really comes in to be an empowering practice. By inquiring what you are most afraid of in a deliberate manner, you can begin to see where your fears might be loaded by past experiences. I found an old article by Martha Beck, author and famous life coach, that suggests that we unload our emotional baggage by simply noticing our emotions and asking, when before this recent experience was I this upset about something? Beck writes, Just as kindness is the universal way of putting on your emotional safety, the universal way to unload your emotional ammunition is presence. Be here now, holding the memory of the original trauma. This is the key, noticing that here and now isn't there and then. The smell of burnt toast doesn't mean your house is burning down. An argument with your partner isn't the abuse you suffered in childhood. Fire, abuse, and any other trauma may still occur, but you are different. You're older, wiser, more capable. You're free to negotiate life more skillfully than you could when you, that first awful thing occurred. You have options. You can stand up for yourself, express your preferences, get help from friends, counselors, the authorities if it's that serious a situation. As you notice your ability to act on your own behalf in the present moment, the terrible helplessness and self-abandonment common to all trauma slowly yields to a sense of personal empowerment. So friends, practice 
is what we're talking about. The practice of inquiry, the practice to begin to see fear, not as something to run away from, not from something to shut down, but to use it as a touchstone, an opportunity to invite self-compassion and kindness for yourself so that you can press in and get present what's, with what's happening in the moment and it's unencumbered with what's happened in the past. One of my personal triggers, I hate to even admit this here on the broadcast, but I will, is my fear of being wrong. Yeah, I know, it's really silly, but it generates a defensiveness in me that cuts me off from others and even any possibility of change. I get very fixed. And when I'm present with this trigger, I know it stems from a relationship I had with my dad growing up. When I'm not present, it drops me into this you and me, us and them kind of thinking, a duality, if you will, where I have to be right, so you must be wrong. And when I can pause and see that trigger for what it is, a reaction to an old condition rather than the present situation I find myself in, I can respond with love and kindness, not only for myself, but for those around me and it enriches my relationships. Now I know that's a rather benign example given what's going on right now, but the triggers going off in our society are real and present and they need you not to feed them with old fears, but to be present with them so that you can begin to inquire and, and unbundle anything that might be entangled with what's going on in the world so that you can really be part of the solution. You can be part of the consciousness, the collective consciousness, if you will, that rises up and leads us to a clearer and better future. I know that it's enough to make anybody want to shut down, but it's really a call to be present. Be present with the political, economic, and world situation Allow yourself to, to really press in. The universe needs you so that we can heal as humanity, as the world. We need you to be present. It needs your conscious attentions and your willingness to face your fear, if for no other reason, so that we can lighten up and then begin to walk out our current challenges with more kindness, more compassion, and more love. There is a wholeness behind all the insanity we seem to be facing in the world today. And we can't know it, let alone experience and express a, 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 a more peace-loving and a more calm and a more conscious approach to things if we're locked up by our fears and our traumas and our triggers that go along with them. Fear begets fear and love begets love. It's a practice to face your fears and be curious rather than shutting down. Oftentimes we shut down as our, our first reaction. And, and that's okay if it's your first reaction. Let your second reaction be curiosity so that you can begin to unleash the trapped energy that's stuck behind your fears. Now I know you, you'll know you're on the right track when you're doing this practice of inquiry with your fears and really stepping into a greater conscious, I'll use the word faith. You'll know you're on the right track because instead of feeling drained by your emotions, you'll feel an energy that creates a forward movement toward your values rather than against someone or something. You may still have a preference for how you think about personal freedom and how you think it can be realized, but you no longer have to villainize, and that's just really a fancy word for being a hater, you no longer have to villainize someone else's approach, someone else's preferences. You certainly can begin to bring your whole present self to the situation once you can untangle it from the fear and you can begin to be part of that creative life force that creates from power rather than reacting to past wounds. Those past wounds are there to guide you to true power, not debilitate you and keep you stuck and benign. The world needs our power and it needs us to be in our power right now. 
So see if this week, as you're moving through the week and that news article comes up, that person that, that brings up all kinds of uh, difficult emotions in you, see if this week, if you can't find just a little bit of pause so that you can begin to be more conscious about what you're reacting to. And if you can, and then to begin to be present with the situation as it stands and not allow it to be a trigger from something old that no longer is happening in the moment. It's really about, you know, Eckhart Tolle calls it the power of now and being in that power of presence so that you can be truly effective and truly conscious. Next week, Reverend Elijah will look more closely at the powerful difference between having faith in spirit versus having the faith of spirit as we continue for the month of September to look at this very powerful idea of facing our fears. Thank you very much. It's time to pray. Join me, if you will. I invite you to either lower your gaze or close your eyes. And know that there is a power and a presence that is moving in as and through each one of us. I know this power is love. I know this power is freedom and beauty and joy. And I know for each one that we allow ourselves to be present, to be so present with what's happening right now that needs our full attention. And I trust that each one finds the, the curiosity to simply pause to look at the upset, to look at the emotional roller coaster, and to distance yourself just far enough away from it so that you can step into the situation and deliver what is being called upon from you by spirit at this moment. I know that each one that is listening to my voice has the power and the presence of that one that is moving through us, as us, and by us at all times, and that each one pauses and each one allows themselves to be in that now moment where power and true creativity rely and lives. I trust that we are each supported, that there are ways that the universe is supporting us that we can't even begin to imagine so that we walk out this week knowing we're supported, knowing we're resourced, knowing we're loved. I give great thanks for I simply release this into the love and the law, knowing it is done, and so it is.